Welcome back. We're going to cover while loops. Now, while loops for me are a great way of making a machine do something if it's not reaching an actual value that you want and you want it to continue to try for a period until it reaches a criteria. Now, sometimes that's a running status, other times it's a number or even a value. So, as an example, let's pretend that I want it to do something like restart a service and as long as that service is not in the status running, restarting, then I would like it to continue to try. So let's start with something a little basic and go with numbers. So in this case we have a value called i. Our i value is a 0 at the beginning. So we've declared it as a 0. Next it's going to have a, a start item, so we've got a do, and inside of our do are our brackets. So this is the bit of code that we're going to run. So just to make this even easier to read, I'm going to put an extra line or two here. So we have do, and that starts our statement. And then we're going to say we're going to output the i. Then we're going to add to the i number 11. And every time that it goes through the iteration, it will add 11. And it's going to continue to do so while i is not or is less than, in this case, 99. So we're going to see a couple of times. So if I run that, you can see we get all of these outputs, and the last one would have been 99, and therefore it stops. So it's not doing that last one, because it didn't need to. So next, let's look at a different scenario. So in this case, similar thing. In this case, I am starting and then I'm adding a 1, now, i exists in here for only one reason. That's because I'm outputting it as an attempt number. So I want to see how many times it runs. And I'm adding a sleep, which is a, in this case, it will tell me that I'm using a terrible bit of alias uh, where I can use start sleep. By the way, that's a great function. I do love this in PowerShell code that it tells me when I'm making bad habits like that. So I will correct my statement and it's going to sleep for three seconds. So in between each attempt, it will tell me the number and it will wait three seconds. Now I could reorder this so that I can see the attempts at different values, but I'm going to keep it as is for the moment. And that's all going to happen while f equals null. So this is an equal statement. And so as long as f doesn't get a value from maps, this is going to continue to run. So we're just going to go ahead and run that. As you can see, the first thing it turns around and says is that because maps doesn't exist. Well, okay, let's fix that, shall we? So I make DIO maps. So that will then result in our next attempts not throwing an error because maps does exist, but it's a get child item. So as long as maps is empty, it's going to continue. So I'm just going to go into maps and I'm going to create another folder inside maps so that we have a child value. So I'm going to create Europe. So our next attempt should then finish because we now have a value and that results in the end statement. Now I'm going to show you what is an infinite loop. Now in this particular scenario we're using the last variable type which is not equal to. So as long as my variable sexy is not equal to 10, which is not because it's 11, I can make that 8, I can make it 5, I can make it 100 billion for all it matters. The point is as long as it's not 10 it will continue to loop. So if I go ahead and run that uh, you can see that it's trying desperately to reach the values. Many, many, many attempts, but it's never going to succeed because sexy is not equal to 10. So if I stop that, I'm just going to have to stop that a second, and I change this value to 10, and I run it again, you see it runs only once because it finished on attempt 1.